started when I was about nine. I, would, I visited a press room five days a week. Um, my father had a small um, contract with a local newspaper and it, it set me in a press room at about four o'clock every afternoon after school. And when I saw the guys that worked in the press room, they were a hell of a lot more interesting than the people that worked in my father's business, the coat and tie people. And these guys were, they wore funny hats and wife beaters and drank on the job. It was a different time. My father had a third or fourth grade education. He was a master sergeant in the United States Army. So when I told him that I had been accepted to school to study photography, he pretty touch much told me there's no way in hell he was paying for art school or photography classes. But no, I was completely discouraged from being a visual artist. Thus, I dug in and my inherent stubbornness brought me to where I am today. Photography eventually got me to printmaking because I had decided that digital prints was not the way I wanted to go, that I wanted to print on arches and using, using etching processes to produce my images. And that's when, it, that's when things began to blossom. It would lock up like that. At 13, had my very first image published and it was granted it was in the local newspaper but at 13 that was quite a coup thus my um, nickname through high school was press it's about secrets it's about identity I mean some things some some things we want to show some things we don't want to show some things we want to hide away forever B they come from the subconscious, they come from experiences with incarceration, they come with experiences of um, you bring everything in your life to the piece. The ability to take a letter form, the alphabet, and produce work that causes people to think or possibly to exercise their compassion, I think it's a fairly as I said, I think it's right livelihood. With the 26 letters of the alphabet, we can say and do anything that we want to do. We are liberated. The name of the shop in Sangha and the tradition means community. It means a community of practitioners. And that's what I'm trying to build here in Tallahassee is we have a few people that have taken the workshops and come in and use the presses daily. And that's the exciting thing for me is when someone comes in with their own idea, their own concept, and approaches a, a vintage press, a press from the 40s or the teens, and succeeds with that. That's, I'm quite pleased when that happens. And that's not what I aimed for when I opened Sangha Press, but it's a good place to be. What it's turned into is a form of dana, which is giving back because what I decided to do when it wasn't, when I discovered that we weren't financially viable here was that I can close the shop or I continue to, continue to run the shop on my own dime and have the beautiful luxury of passing on what I know to young folks. Important to be compassionate and kind to others. Take your skills and give those skills to the world. Do not hoard them to yourselves because of ego. Give the gift of yourself to this world and you will be fulfilled. I approach that. I try. And I think that's all we can do. The capitals used to be in the uppercase, whereas the non-caps were in the lowercase. And that's where the word, where the term comes from. And the term, mind your P's and Q's. And that's pretty easy to get confused. P's and Q's, B's and D's. It looks like a P.